how does the cold weather affect the range and the battery life? So the cold weather probably drops the battery capacity by a third to a half of what the summer levels are, depending on the temperature. And the more climate control that you use, the higher your heat is set. And if you have one or both of the, the seat warmers on, will also decrease your range and stuff. Like if you want your climate control set high, you're going to reduce the range a lot more than you would if you left it a little more reasonable or something. Do you think the range extender is necessary in colder climates? I personally do because the battery capacity drops by like 50%. So you would have to, if, it, if it's 75 miles of range typically in a, like in the summer, then that would drop it down to like 35-ish. Really, if you have a job or something you need to commute to, uh, anything other than just going to get groceries and stuff, then it would become a potential issue, I would think. Do you have any advice for extending the range in the winter? Well, you can preheat the battery before you go somewhere. The car will allow you to set like a time that you're gonna leave to go somewhere to work or something. And then it will get the battery prepped, which will heat it up so that it can store more electricity. It takes like three hours for it to, to prep the battery. So you have to have a specific time you're leaving and then you have to program it ahead of time and then there has to be enough time for it to to do that so i never use it at all uh it's extremely inconvenient for me because my times that i go places change and stuff also starting your car in eco pro mode will help you save energy i think it uses less power to to do your climate control and less a little less acceleration and stuff so in the winter time that adds up to quite a bit so rather versus leaving it in comfort mode which might burn a little bit extra power which is not what you want to do in the wintertime and you can program your car to do that to leave it in eco pro which is what i did or you could do it manually uh, if you choose to do that as well how does the i3 handle on icy or snowy roads well the regen braking can be an issue in the wintertime when when it's slippery and it just activates like whenever you take your foot off the pedal so it can be uh pretty scary actually if you pull your foot off reflexively and start sliding what you want to do in slippery weather is leave the acceleration meter in the center so that you're not getting any actual abrupt change in acceleration and then if you want to slow down you just make it very slightly negative and you slow down very gradually and then you won't slide otherwise an abrupt change might cause you to slide on the snow or the ice it would be really helpful if there's actually just a button built into the interface to turn it on and off so that you can turn it off if there's a snowstorm or sleet or something like that and then turn it back on when the roads have been cleared up the i3 has some pretty slim tires, which are actually pretty good for, for deeper snow. So if you get a few inches or something like that, it seems like the steering and handling is actually pretty good. I think that's actually a net positive. What are your top three tips for someone who lives further north but is considering buying an i3? Well, one of them is uh, the windows. They actually, they come down automatically whenever you open your door and they'll drop like an inch. So the, if there's any ice buildup down here, you're gonna wanna scrape that off before you open your doors and unlock your car. And then once that's scraped and cleared away, you can open your doors and then the, the window will be able to drop freely so you don't burn out the motor that's in there. So tip number two would be adding climate control to your key fob with Bimmer code. We actually have a video on how to do it. So you can reprogram your key fob so that the panic alarm becomes climate control. It'll warm up your car for, while you're still in your house and it'll be nice and warm when you go out there <laughs> and ready to go. And tip number three would probably be to keep your 12 volt battery up to date because as everyone knows, when the temperature goes down, your battery is more likely to die. If your 12 volt dies, uh, the car will kind of be bricked until you get it to a service center who can put a new 12 volt in and then reconfigure the computer to accept it and then uh, get it going again, which as far as I know is very difficult or impossible to do at your house. So what you want to do is probably replace it every three years and just keep it uh, keep it fresh. And we'll be filming a video soon about changing your 12 volt battery. So look forward to that in the future. It's really good to keep the corks in mind though. And um, the regen issue is really the biggest one to keep in mind. It's definitely not the best winter car, but I personally still love it. And I'm going to continue to drive it in the winter up here. And uh, I just overall enjoy it. <laughs>